Okay, so today's webinar's topic is develop yourself to develop others. And it's all about CPD, continuous professional development, and our ability to uh, serve the needs of our clients. We as practitioners servicing the needs of our small business clients. And we'll focus a lot on what IVASA as a professional body offers and the requirements there, but also look at CPD a bit broader. And as I said, well, we've got Dr. Lawrence Kedzikwa uh, and uh, Prof. Shepard Diwayo in the room to focus on that. We also have Andre de Priya, the MD of IBASA, and the chairperson of IBASA, Daphne Matlow, in the room for you, those of you that have just uh, joined. So please remember to use the text chat to share your ideas. We will uh, give the opportunity for questions too, to be answered. Uh, use the Q&A for that, please. Okay, but let's get started with a poll and asking everyone in the room a question. So uh, the first question we want to ask, we're gonna do a few of these today is how familiar are you with Ibasa CPD requirements? How familiar are you with Ibasa's CPD requirements? And uh, there you can choose one. I've studied the policy and know exactly how to comply. So that means you're an expert. Uh, I'm aware of the policy and I'm familiar with the broad provisions. So you may know about it and what the basic requirements are, but not an expert. Or you're aware of that there is a policy, but you're not so familiar with the provisions. Uh, third choice, or for fourth choice, I'm not aware of the policy, but know that IBASA has got something like CPD requirements. Um, and then uh, I'm not aware of the policy and I'm not aware of the of that IBASA has requirements for that. Or perhaps even you may not know what CPD is about at all. So you can choose any of those. We've got a good number of people in the room, so that's great to see. If you can vote there, we're going to close the... Uh, by the way, the, the panelists may vote too if you wish to. Um, so I see there's still some people voting. By the way, about more than half of us are saying, I'm aware, I'm aware of the policies, but I don't necessarily know all about it. So let's see how that pans out if we're in the poll. Um, and we can share the results too. So about 42% in the end say that I'm aware that there's a policy, but I'm not familiar with the provisions. So you're in the right place here because we're going to clarify exactly what the provisions are. Um, and then uh, uh, what may be a bit worrying is that 23% are saying that, or, or if you add that up, the 23% and the 12% together, that say that they're either not aware of the policy or that they're not aware of what CPD requirements are at all. So that's good. What is that, 35 uh, plus? The four percent that don't know CPD is like forty percent. There's quite a number of people that have very little awareness of CPD. So panelists, take note of that. So I think we can rather assume um, that we need to uh, state as much as possible rather than skim over things, considering where we are at in the room. So I'll stop that sharing now, so that we can get into the substance of our webinar here today. We will have two. Well, actually, we'll have three presentations from our two uh, panelists, and we've broken that down so that there's space for participation. And I will remind you that you can use the Q&A to post any question you have as we go along. So don't use the text chat for that. Open the Q&A window. So by the way, at the bottom of, the, of your window, there's a button that says Q&A, two little speech bubbles. Choose that one, not the, the single speak, speech bubble, which is chat. Chat is just for chat, so you can participate in that chat too, please. But for questions that you want us to address, please, post them in the Q&A and you can post them as we go along. Okay, so um, let's uh, move forward then. So Lawrence, if we can move over to you and uh, Carl in the background will load your slides. I know you've got slides for the section of the presentation. Okay, uh, thanks. But you can, you, can, you, can start, you can start with uh, explaining to us what um, the CPD environment is about the requirements at Ibasa. Okay, thanks, Christoph. Um, welcome to everybody who is participating in this webinar. Um, I'm going to take you through a few slides that it tries to explain um, the CPD policy of Ibasa. And let me begin by touching on the purpose of the CPD policy itself. Um, and uh, in terms of its definition and what it covers. Uh, basically, it is uh, a requirement for every business advisor 
um, that they maintain, broaden and deepen their abilities, skills and knowledge and that is required for them to practice as a, as a business um, advisor uh, in the context of uh, IBASA. And uh, for us as a professional body, we are required because we have relationship with many uh, organization and institutions and among them statutory ones. So it is required that us as a professional body, we develop, monitor um, and enforce standards that ensures that our business advisors are always developing themselves and also maintaining the professional competence uh, when they deal with clients in the, in the field. So essentially, as stated in the actual policy about the purpose of this uh, uh, policy is that um, um, it is all about developing and maintaining the professional standards of the business advising industry. And knowing that it is not a regulated space. So this is an initiative that IBASA does to ensure that clients receive the best quality of service and support and post-intervention support in, uh, depending on what kind of interventions are being done. So the CPD policy allows business advisors to reflect uh, upon themselves in the context of what they are doing in the field. And then it also helps them to establish their own personal learning goals with the purpose of trying to increase, increase their knowledge, skills, and competencies. And then it provides a platform where or um, a framework for business advisors to uh, engage in learning activities in order to meet uh, especially the ethical obligations uh, of the business advising profession. Next one. So in terms of the responsibilities, um, it, it is a two-way um, uh, kind of relationship. Um, there is IBASA, then there's a member of IBASA. Uh, the, but the primary responsibility rests with the member. Um, and the, their, 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 their main role is to make sure that they record their CPD activities and report the hours that they've completed to IBASA in accordance with the reporting cycle. I think I'll touch on that one briefly towards in the, in the next slide. Uh, and, Lawrence, just to interrupt you quickly, I'm gonna stop your video. We're gonna stop your video because your sound is breaking up. So at least if you are speaking, we can hear you properly. Okay, so that's don't, fine. Don't uh, think we've disconnected you. You're still connected. You can just speak now. We won't see your face. Okay, that's fine. Um, so to maintain, uh, basically the member should maintain the record of their CPD activities and report the hours to IBASA uh, within the reporting cycle. And, uh, and also we need to note that CBD is compulsory for all IBASA graded and accredited business advisors, whether you are the business advisor, principal business advisor, or a certified business advisor. And like I've said before, it's for maintaining your professional status within that particular grade. And uh, it is not used to promote you to the next grade. Um, so if you want to go to the next grade, you have to resubmit an application and there are a lot of other documents and information required before you can be assessed for promotion. And then the role of IBASA basically is to make sure that we maintain the policy, we monitor our members in terms of compliance with the policy, and then we enforce the standards that the policy dictates. Um, and then it also... Um, it is our responsibility as IBASA uh, to provide reports on compliance should they be required. But that one can only be done with the consent of the member. So essentially the member will put a request that uh, they require a report um, to prove their CPD compliance. Next slide. Um, in terms of the components of what makes the CPD, um, in accordance with the policy, it's structured into three components. The first one is the structured learning, uh, which refers to your course qualification or program that you undertake uh, probably during the year or over a number of years. Um, and then the learning itself should meet a number of criteria. Uh, the first one being that um, it must be um, a program or a course or a qualification certified by QCT or uh, um, Quality Council for Occupations and Trades, or it can be aligned, NQF uh, aligned, 
or it could be a course that has been assessed and approved by the BASA CPD committee, uh, or it could be any formal training programs that also has been approved by the BASA CPD committee. Um, and then normally the approved programs can be listed on the, on the website, which I understand is being upgraded and uh, the information should eventually become available. Next slide. And then the next component is unstructured learning, uh, which refers to activities related to attendance or participation in a number of other activities. Here we are talking about seminars, webinars, uh, business discussions, it could be meetings, uh, even self-study that one engages in, or writing and publishing professional articles uh, in journals or in books uh, or in newspapers or in magazines. Um, or any other related project work that the one that, that a person does. It could be participation in media shows where probably they're talking about businesses. Uh, it could be publication of media articles. Um, the list is not exhaustive, but essentially whatever the person engages, it can be assessed um, whether it qualifies to be counted under unstructured learning. Uh, so once you submit the evidence of what you have done, and then whether that which you have done qualifies or not can be assessed by the CPD committee. And uh, should there be contestation, then the committee will be able to make a decision. Next. And the last one, uh, the last component is, it refers to invoice time spent in offering business advice, training or mentoring or coaching provided to SMMEs and startup businesses or prospective entrepreneurs. The whole point of having this one, it was informed by the idea that we don't want business advisors that are not advising. So at least there must be a minimum indication that you could do more, but at least there must be a minimum that is expected to have been done during that particular reporting cycle. So, that, so those three components that I've indicated above with this one is the third one is what constitutes um, the components of the CPD and should count towards your CPD hours. Next. And in terms of measurement of CPD hours, a CPD hour is 60 minutes. So whatever amount of minutes you spend, uh, you divide by 60 to get the CPD hours equivalent. So in terms of structured learning, um, you can input 40 hours maximum if you have not done anything in that particular space, then it's zero. You don't have to write anything, it's zero hours. And then in terms of unstructured learning, we have maximum 40 hours. If you have not done anything there, then again, it's zero. And then for the two A and B, um, then the maximum amount of hours you need to put is 40 hours. So the combination of the two will give you 40 hours. And then for C, practicing as a business advisor, it's 80 hours minimum. So the amount of hours that are required uh, for CPD per annum, it's about 120 hours. Next. And then, so the calculation, there's an illustration of how you can calculate the combination between structured learning and unstructured learning. Um, but the maximum hours that you can claim, you could do more uh, but the maximum hours that you need to submit, we need about just 40. Um, so they could be in combination between A and B, and, uh, but they are kept at 40. Next. Um, I've been asked to start my video. Okay. And uh, in terms of how the measurement of the CPD happens is that if you have been with the institute for a uh, 12 months, then you can, you are expected to submit 120 hours. But now if you have been for, let's say 11, 10 months, five months, three months, two months, by the time the reporting period comes to an end, then there's a prorated uh, method for calculating and that's presented in that particular table. So you've been with, let's say you joined the organization in March, just one month before the year ends. Um, then you are supposed to put in about 20 CPD hours. To, that's what you're supposed to report. So that table illustrates the grading and the uh, cascading of the CPD hours. Next. 
And then the, I'm sure we are aware that uh, messages have been going out to say members should submit their CPD points to IBASA. And uh, we had three, three year cycles, um, starting from the 1st of April, 2013. And our third cycle should end in 2020. And uh, so the idea was to get people to start submitting their CPD hours, even though the CPD policy had been completed and finalized in 2016, so that they don't lose out on all the other things that they've done. And, uh, but now we have taken that the actual submission of CPD hours should be happening on an annual basis. And it only applies to uh, the graded and certified business advisor category. The owner and the fellows of the institute are excluded from CPD requirements. Next. And so the actual submission of the CPD should be annually and uh, should be done within six months of the year end. Uh, and the secretariat will send reminders to non-compliant members so that they can make sure that their CPD are up to date. Um, so the CPD hours should cover the period 1 April to the 31st of March. So this is in line with the BASA financial year. And um, I've already stated that uh, if you acquire membership during the year, uh, there are certain number of CPD require hours required. And uh, the only gap is that we need to uh, also revise when we revise the policy is the issue of carryover of CPD points into the following year. How much are you able to carry over? Next. I think I'm done. Um, Christoph, I'll end over to you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 shouldn't do that. Shouldn't do that. You may have noticed that. Uh, you may have noticed that two of the two main internet lines uh, going under the sea that connects us to the Zoom service are broken. So I think we're experiencing some issues there. So I had some bandwidth and I'm not sure, you know, sort of I thought that I couldn't hear you for a while, Lawrence, but apparently everyone else could. So it may be a local problem. Um, so let's uh, let's move on to uh, a bit more detail. I see Clive has posted the question and I'm sure there are more questions, by the way. So we've got a lot of people in the room, over 50, nearly 60. In fact, we are 60 people in the room. Um, for many of us, CPD will be new and specifically meeting the requirements. So, so Clive has asked there, Clive Roberts has asked, how are, are CPD recorded? Um, so we, we can ask, we can answer those detailed questions um, um, as we go along a bit later on. Um, but I suppose the, the important part here is for us to understand not only that it is a bureaucratic requirement, um, Lawrence, but it also uh, mm -hmm. ensures that we stay up to date and that we can deliver quality services. Um, so we, where there are these things that you need to submit and hours to meet and so on, we can easily fall into the trap, I suppose, of starting to just count the hours as opposed to be conscious of the learning that we have. Mm. Um, yeah. Yes. So to respond to that question, even the one posted by Clive, is that currently the, um, the documentation process is manual. Uh, it's only when it's submitted to um, to 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 Ibasa, that's when it becomes electronic. Uh, so essentially, the issue of doing it on the on the Ibasa platform, it's something that is there's work already currently underway. Uh, that also encompasses the grading system. So I'm sure very soon it should be possible to do submissions online uh, on the Ibasa website. But currently, it's work um, in progress. Okay, so there's a manual process, and we'll talk about the detail of that process as we get to the end of the webinar. So everyone's informed on that. Um, but let's move on. We can ask another question to uh, everyone in the room through the poll function. So you'll see there it will pop up uh, the poll to ask you a question about what you think uh, should be required in such a policy. So as a professional body. IBASA is required to have a policy in place that measures the CPD, the continuous professional development of its members. And uh, we would like to know through this poll, uh, which, which options do you think are important? So you can vote there. 
um, everyone can participate. You must just go onto the poll and select what you think should be included. So tertiary qualifications, by the way, can if you think everything of that should be included, you can tick everything. No, not, not, not likely that you tick everything, but uh, let's start with tertiary education or the qualifications, then general business certificates, so certified programs, then business support specific certified programs. So it's specifically on the disciplines of mentoring, coaching, consulting, short courses on practical topics. So they're not necessarily certified, but they're practical and they guide you in uh, applying what you need to do in the trade or part of an informal peer learning group or part of a facilitated peer learning group, which should be included in the CPD requirements. And then there's some two more, uh, informal learning through your own reading and e-unit searches and so on. And then um, lastly, experience in delivering business support services. Should that also be measured? So that is actually working as a business advisor or as a practitioner in the field. Which of those should be included in, in the CPD requirements of a body like Ubasa? Uh, we will probably have a winner or two or some front runners. In fact, at the moment, business support specific certified programs and short courses that are not certified are heading the race along with experience in delivery. So it kind of looks like, I'm going to close soon, so if you want to vote, please do so. It kind of looked like us in the room seem to lean towards certified programs, that's covering the disciplines of mentoring, coaching, consulting, et cetera, or non-certified non short courses that are practical as, as a preference, along with experience in the field. And then there are other, other requirements like certified uh, programs, uh, own reading, and so on. Tertiary qualifications actually is for the second, second, uh, second most, so second least, or third least after the peer, 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 peer learning. So that's quite interesting to note. And we can compare that, of course, with what the policy is at the moment. So I'm going to end the, end the poll and share the results with you. So you can see there's a, the two front runners are uh, business support specific certified programs and short courses on practical topics. Um, so for our panelists that are in the thick of things around devices policies, that's perhaps something to note what the preference of the people in this webinar as practitioners are. Of course, there are formal requirements too. So by the way, SACWA is um, the body that regulates professional bodies and our CPD system needs to meet their requirements, of course, too. Okay, so let's stop share that and move on with our webinar in terms of our topics. So um, Shepard is our, is our Prof Shepard is our chairperson of our education, education committee. Um, and um, let's, let's bring him into the webinar. So Shepard, if you can uh, switch on your camera and we actually, I think we can unmute you. Um, what, um, in terms of Ibasa's approach to continuous membership development, uh, what is that approach and, and, and how does that work? So you're the chairperson of the of the education committee. So maybe we can start there. You know, sort of, what is this education committee, and how does that fit in with the Basel's approach? Uh, okay, uh, morning everyone. The, the the committee is responsible for a, a number of things, uh, including the the webinar. Also, maybe part of the CPD, which uh, Lawrence was talking about. But the primary aim is to develop uh, membership of, of IBASA. So in terms of the development programs which you have, I think I can list them into, or categorize them into three. The, the first one being the, the webinar which we are currently having now. And what we do with the webinar is we come up with a number of topics the topics which we think would be relevant to the members and also some of the topics which we solicit from the members in terms of what they would want to maybe ask to discuss or to, to, to have a bit of information or knowledge about. And we run this every month of uh, every month of, of the year. And so that's number one. 
The second one is the conferences. Unfortunately, currently we, we haven't had a conference, maybe past two years, but we used to have con or the last conference which we had, I think was in 2017 and 2016. So the conferences would bring in maybe experts in the field. Then we have also symposiums, we also have people coming to, to talk to us. And that also empowers members in terms of knowledge and the information and all the current developments in the in the industry and from the conferences we also had uh, journals or uh, written outputs from or reports from from those uh, conferences so what we are planning to do now is to to continue or to start having those if possible to have those same conferences organized every year. And from the conferences also to have journals. So we are working on having what might call academic journals where people contribute. So from each conference which we have, and we are planning to have each of uh, maybe a conference every year. So from each conference, if possible, then we'd have a journal which will come out of that conference. So we are currently working on that now. And if everything goes to according to plan, we should be having our conference this year. And obviously maybe a, a general output from, from that conference. So the conference, that's the, the second uh, aspect of how we contribute to, to BASA membership in terms of knowledge creation and uh, <coughs> development. Then the other one or the third one, is uh, maybe what I would term academic. And what we have done or what we've been working on throughout maybe the past number of years, which maybe we can uh, safely say it has come to, which, uh, uh, to bear fruit now, is uh, arrangements with different institutions of higher learning, uh, namely different universities. So for now, we have gone into an arrangement with TUT to offer a business advising qualification. And we are hoping to start the rollout this year. We have done the, the, the modules and, and we'll be offering that hopefully this year. And I think you might have seen as members adverts which uh, Ibasa send out for possible lecturers mm -hmm. in the program. We also have or working now with a TIBA in, in Cape Town, another private uh, university. And I think you might have also realized maybe or noticed in the past, they have offered a few scholarships in the, in the past to IBASA members. Then we are also working with Nelson Mandela University in Eastern Cape through our uh, regional chair in, in, in the Eastern Cape. And also with regents in uh, KZN region. And what we are trying to do is to be able to offer business advice and qualification through those institutions. And currently with TUT, we are looking at uh, NQF levels seven, which is at a uh, graduate level. And with the other institutions also, it will be the same, but then looking at articulating to uh, honors, masters and PhDs. So maybe just in summary, three different uh, categories. One, the webinar, two, the, the conferences and from the conferences, the general articles. Then thirdly, the academic where we are working in collaboration with different universities. Thank you. Great stuff. So, um, Carla, Carla, I know you are uh, making your job difficult today in jumping around with the internet playing its parts again. Yeah. But um, Carl can then shift the spotlight view. Yeah, do that. That's the easiest way of doing it. Thank you, Carl. So that everyone can see who's talking. So um, 
uh, Shepard, that's that's really interesting. How, how much does Ibasa take it on itself to make it its responsibility to help uh, members in meeting the CPD requirements? And I think all the three points which I've mentioned are all part of the CPD inputs. So for example, if you look at the webinars, it also contributes to the CPD. If you look at the conferences in the past, the ones which we had, they also contributed, I can't remember the number of points now, but it also contributed to, to, to the CPD. Then if you look at the readings, the journal articles or someone contributing journal articles or attending the symposium, writing something whether to, to, to the journal or to some of the magazines which you have participated in as, as Ibasa, that also contributes to CPDs. Then obviously the academic one, I think Lawrence just spoke about it earlier on in terms of the structured contribution to CPD. So if someone was to improve his or her qualifications through any of the qualifications which you are talking about, then that will also be contributing to CPD. But it remains the responsibility of the member. It's not the BASA's responsibility to offer enough hours so that members can qualify. Yes, that, that's, that's true. That's correct. Okay, so let's, let's hear from our audience, everyone in the room today. Well, how difficult do you find it to actually then report on those CPD activities that you conclude? So it's easy to complete. It requires or it requires, you would select one of these options, by the way. So it's easy to complete or it requires a bit of detailed attention, but it's not too difficult to do. Um, it is a bit complicated and challenging. Uh, it is too difficult to do or I have not tried doing it yet. So I don't really know how difficult it is. Okay, so there's quite a bit of people in the room that have not submitted CPD at all before. So they don't know how complicated it may be. No one is saying it's easy. Maybe it's, it's, it would be surprising if it was. Uh, quite a bit say about a quarter of us in the room say it requires a bit of detailed attention, but it's not too difficult. And then the rest says it's a bit complicated or it's too difficult to do. It's a few, very few. Okay, but uh, the surprising part is that close to 60%, I'm going to end the poll now, so if you still want to vote, do so quick, quickly. Okay, one, two, three, let's stop the poll now. Okay, so the clear, clear winner there is that I haven't tried it yet, which is perhaps in, indicative of new membership and people starting out on this journey. So it's good that we have this webinar, because as part of this webinar, we can help people to understand better how to do that. I can share the results for you if you want to see uh, how we have all voted on this. Uh, so that is quite interesting to note, uh, 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 Shepard. Are we still in this music yes. now? Yeah. So we, we, are, we have a challenge as Ibasa to make sure that everyone understands the CPD system, which is what we will be looking at now. So let's bring uh, uh, Lawrence back into the discussion. And I think there's some slides to, to show specifically around this, the IBASA system. So some of the questions that we are, have asked, uh, your, your questions aren't um, disappearing. By the way, you'll see that, that, that some of the panelists are, have started answering your questions already in text. So if you're on the Q&A window, you'll see uh, some of the questions have been answered in text. We'll come back to some of them as well a bit later on. Uh, but please put your questions there. We will we will address them, and if we can't address them here today, we will address them as we go along. So I'm going to stop sharing the poll result, and if we can ask uh, Lawrence to please show his face now. So we've established Lawrence that I couldn't hear you because of my problem, not about yours. So you can share you can you can share your image while you talk too, and there are some slides okay. that Carl has put up for us. So uh, the Ibasa system, so how to compute and support by CPD. So we may address some of the questions already here, but let's, let's, let's see if there are any other questions that some of the attendees may raise in the process. Okay, thanks, Christoph. 
Um, in terms of the completion of uh, the CPD hours, um, normally a request is sent out from the office to different to members to members' emails for them to start populating the um, the Excel template. Uh, so I want Carol, can you go to the next one? So the the template is in Excel. It's a manual system. And we hope to migrate the system at some point to, to be on an online system uh, in line with some of the questions that people are raising. Uh, so you just enter the CPD activities uh, when they were completed and the hours that were spent on those activities. And then some of them you will need to provide evidence. It can be a completion certificate, um, but there's a list of, if you, if you check the actual Excel, it lists a, a lot of what is acceptable as evidence for that. And this is the A, which is the maximum that you can claim from that particular point is about 40. Um, can you go to the next one? And then the next one, which is B, unstructured learning. Again, the same format, you list the activities that you've done, the workshops, um, what uh, hours were spent on that particular workshop and what is the evidence. And I think it talks to some of the questions that saying, like we have attended this webinar, how do we get a certificate for it? I think the answers will come at some point. So section A and section B, it's kept at 40 hours. So it's a combination of how many hours you spend in each. You may spend more than 40 hours, either in both categories, but for, our, for us to say you have met the minimum requirements, we just need 40 hours to be recorded and to be submitted to us. Next one. And then for business advising, uh, the minimum hours required is 80 hours in a year. So the 80 hours will translate into two weeks or five um, into 10 days of working as a business advisor. So we are saying that if you're a business advisor, we expect you to, to be engaged in business advising for 10 days out of the 365 days in a year. And uh, so the evidence you indicate whether you're supporting small, micro, medium, large businesses, and the number of clients that you are supporting in those um, in that particular category of business, and then the hours that you have spent, and then the invoice, um, the sorry, the evidence of uh, of those kind of engagements with your clients. So it's for us to check whether you are engaged in productive consulting work as a business advisor during the year and that you are still participating in what you are trying to do. Um, and then so it will give us an indication of what to check. So the three components, A, B, and C, this is what will give you your expected 120 hours uh, per year. Um, so you would find that our structure is slightly different from other professional bodies because they don't include the actual work that they do. Uh, but they just focus on the structured and unstructured, but we have added the business advising component uh, with 80 hours. So that what gives us 120 hours a year. And so those, um, once the form is completed, plus the evidence of what you have done, it's submitted to a specific email to IBASA uh, when the request is sent out to members for them to start submitting. Thank you very much. Uh, great. Uh, thanks, uh, Lawrence, for explaining that process. So, while at, we live in the age of computers, we are moving towards that. But the, the request is to patiently do the paperwork. But it's electronic and the, the documents are electronic, the templates are electronic. So, it's not taking a pen and filling it out. It's just using those template documents and submitting those. So, um, let's. Um, Let's open the floor, but then I'm going to ask uh, that Andre and Daphne, um, even Carl, you as host, um, definitely uh, Shepard, that you all switch on your cameras uh, because there are quite a few questions and we might tackle these answers from different um, angles. So let's uh, get everyone in the room and um, then we can go to them. Uh, by the way, uh, you can view the, the questions as they are being answered in text format um, by clicking the Q&A button too. So some of them, Lawrence has already started answering um, 
by typing the answers. We'll address those two. And what I'll do is, this is something new for us to do, but I'm going to do a screen share um, so you can see what we're talking about too, even if you watch the recording afterwards, because that's always a challenge. Um, and uh, there you can see the questions. So uh, let me just confirm you can see the questions, panelists. Anyone of you can confirm that? No. I'm doing a screen share. You're not seeing my screen share? No. Okay, so Carl, can you do a screen share of the, see if you can get that right for us? I'm definitely doing a screen share, yeah, but as we've noticed, my internet today is not doing what it should be doing. Uh, so, so Carl, if you can do a screen share with the q and if you can see if you can get that right for us. If you can't, then it's not a, a trench mesh, because then we'll just keep doing it as we, as we normally did it. Now there you, you, you're much quicker than I thought you would be. Okay, so we've got some open questions and let's start with those. Um, and panelists, please uh, share your ideas on these. So, Modi uh, Duguana, um, thank you for your question. How do I retrieve the CPD attended on Ibasa webinars if I lost my records? So um, maybe, uh, the first thing would be from now on, make sure that you are uh, saving your records, including the email confirmation that you get, which is the certificate that is proof of attendance after the webinar. So if you've registered for a webinar and you attended it, you will receive an email in your inbox from the webinar admin uh, confirming that you've attended and you can use that. So what you could perhaps do is when you receive the one for today, for today's webinar, the confirmation that you attended, you can go search for the subject field or the sent uh, name okay. from that email address, and you'll be able to retrieve from your email system all the past ones. I'm not sure if there's another way from a BASA side that you could confirm webinar attendance. Um, Andre or Lawrence or Shepard? Christoph, I think I would recommend that. Uh... The member perhaps just contact us and let's see if there's a way or perhaps we uh, look at the records uh, and see how we can assist. That may be a good quick one. So, so Ibasa does have the record of people that have attended, but it doesn't necessarily have the capacity to immediately yeah. confirm for individuals. So maybe the quickest uh, Modi Guana would be for you to go into your email system and check for those emails and uh, just print it out. Um, I think that would be the quickest way for you, but um, okay. to, to take our embrace off on to off to. Okay, so we've answered that one. Uh, let's go to the next question. Uh, Rick, I don't know about other members, but I haven't ever been asked to submit my CPD hours. So I'm not sure who wants to tackle that one. Um. Okay, I think I'll take it. Um, I think it's a communication issue and uh, we'll try to communicate better uh, in terms of uh, streamlining our CPD reporting requirements. And uh, <clears throat> I'm sure there are a number of other gray areas in terms of the CPD policy, but we are in the process of spruning it up and then we should be able to make contacts going forward with all the respective members who are in good standing. Uh, Christoph, I see uh, Ed has also raised that in the text, and I think if there are anyone else on the webinar who's got the similar program, problem, they can indicate it to us in a text so that can be a quick follow-up uh, on the for the people on the webinar. Um, at least. Uh, Andre wanted to say something. The Christoph, just from our side, I think the uh, towards the end of last year, we got the approval to from the board that we could uh, make our membership uh, much better on the IT side. So we are we actually did or had quite a bit of work done. Um, and I, I'm glad to say that by well, this coming Friday, we actually have a meeting with our developers to see how far the, uh, the process is. Uh, and I believe that they, they're very much uh, very close to the end. 
And now this this includes things like the uh, member management system, um, which will um, I think will help the, the the process or improve the process substantially. Uh, we also looked at a learner management system, um, and that that is going to uh, give us the ability to upload uh, training training material training uh, that will that one can use then for uh, the CPD uh, as well. So I think from Friday's meeting we should be in a position to get to a, a stage where we can put a project plan together for the rollout of that. Uh, and I see there was another uh, person who requested uh, that we send an email. Um, so pretty soon, I think they will be, we will be in a position to, to send out an email to say these are the changes. Okay, great. Uh, thank you for that clarification, Andre. So we have to be patient a bit to get the nice version of being able to easily submit through electronic means. But at the, in the meantime, it is the version that we have at the moment. And I see that Harrison is asking, where do I get these templates? Um, the templates uh, can be um, sourced from the Secretariat, IBASA Secretariat, and also um, downloaded from the, the website, IBASA website. Um, so but, wonder, currently, maybe... but currently the website is currently being uh, upgraded. So um, once it's up and running, that those documents should be able to, uh, to be, will be available. I agree. Okay, I, I do know that there was an email sent out to members too, where they could download the templates from. Mm. Okay. That's right, Andre? I think so, yes. So perhaps it would be useful for us Just to, to reach send, send me an set. email, no? uh, Andre at Ibasa, and let's see. OK, so Andre can reply to any request for the templates to be sent. Great, so then we can go on to Mokete. What app, uh, type of evidence do you need for advising? So uh, Mokete is talking about the practice of serving as a business at the Advisor. Yes, um, in terms of we were not requiring a lot of information for that. We just needed the, the name of the client, the contact, and the hours that were spent with that particular client. Yeah, so, so the evidence that you need to submit? Yes. What is that? So just a list of your clients, and then the contact details, and then the hours that you spend with them. So if we need to verify any information, we can we can either send them an email or we can give them a call to do um, audit check. Yeah. Okay, so there's no additional paperwork. It's just the contact details of those clients so that it could be verified. Yes, yeah, so far, that's, that's, that's what is been required. Yeah. Great. And then Diane is asking, what are we submitting for now? It's a bit confusing because we must submit by 28 February and it seems that the period runs till April or rather from April to March each year. Mm. Yes, the, the, the IBASA financial year runs from 1 April to the 31st of March. So when you submit, you should submit for uh, the previous years, including, um, like for now, you can't submit for, you can't submit for the current year because it's still running and it will end on the 31st of March. So from April, we are trying to give people six months to comply. Uh, so from 1 April, then you can submit for the year ended 31st March 2020. Okay, I hope that clarifies it, Diane. Uh, Miriam is saying, I've done previous webinars uh, from the website. How do I then submit proof of that, that I've attended those webinars? So that means that uh, Miriam has watched the replay over YouTube or from the website. Uh, 
I think the silence, Muriel, means that there's no proper answer for you today. So that would be qualifying as self-study? Um, to watch videos over, over the internet that may be the replay of the webinar? Yes, sure. It can, um, it can be part of the unstructured uh, CPD um, because you, you have gone through what others have gone through live. So it's a delayed live. So it's but you won't have proof of attending it as you would for the live webinar. So it yeah. will be no unstructured learning. Mm, it will be unstructured learning. Yeah. Okay, and then Ladimo is saying, I'm new to this. How do I become a member? I've tried sending emails to no avail. Perhaps email I can communicate with would help. Can we ask you, Andre, to ask? Uh, Andre? Yes. Yeah, yes, there's a, we'll show the email at the end in the Basha portion. Uh, okay, so just be patient. Detail. We will show an email address for you to send a request for assistance then at the end of the webinar. Good. So then Esther says, I would like to get the adverts on the teaching at university. I think that's the opportunity that we refer to in terms of lecturing as part of the TUT program. So can she contact the office for that, uh, Andre? Yes, uh, Lesejo. She's okay, the person Andre's, handling it. Okay, Andre is typing in this email address there for you, uh, Esther, so you can respond to that there. And then Rick again, you can download CPD reporting. Okay, there, there's got the email address first, or rather the website address and then submit your CPDRs template. And there's a template for you to download. So thanks for showing us that. And then Mohammed is saying, good day, I've just been granted membership. Welcome, uh, Mohammed. But my membership isn't registered on my online profile because this was probably caused problems at the latest stage. Uh, so Mohammed is worried that because it's not reflected on his profile, it may not be validated yet. I'm not sure about the detail about that. Who would like to tackle mm. that one? Yeah, it requires follow up. So, Mohammed, can you also send the email to you, Andre? Andre at Ibasa. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Thanks, Andre. The one for his status, well, perhaps she can just send it to Andre at Ibasa and then all her details, and I will yeah. forward it to the right person. Okay. And then, in, sorry, I can't read your name probably. Uh, I'm sure I'm mispronouncing it, but sorry for that. Can Ibasa publish an annual program calendar for the seminar, webinars, etc., to enable better planning and participation? I got the email for the current webinar yesterday. So I'm not sure who wants to tackle that one. I think the, uh, if I may, Christoph, I think from an annual program perspective or calendar perspective, that is one of the, the requests that we had from the board as well, not only for the publication of these things, but also uh, I think all the activities within uh, or the key activities from the Basel side. And this is actually a very good one. Um, I know that we, it, it's not always easy to plan this a year ahead, uh, but I think uh, we could do this. And I think you, uh, Christoph, are perhaps one of the, the key people uh, who did this for us in the past. So um, I think we could add this to our annual program or calendar for Ibasa. Yep. Let's see if we can do it. Right, and as the year progresses, hopefully the emails and the notifications can go out a bit earlier too. So sorry for yes. that. Yes. Uh, perhaps we can make a promise that it will. And Gorni is asking, is it uh, what way to submit the proof for business advising services offered? I think we've covered that in Gorni, so you can just put the name and details of the client so that it can be verified. And then Mohammed again, thank you for your response. One more question. Can I download from the website a letter of good standing? Not at this stage. No. 
you have to approach the secretariat for one. Yeah. Okay. So, Mama, you need to send an admin, uh, sorry, an email to admin at ibasa.org. Does it? Okay, we're going having a conversation here with Ngoni. Uh, is it fine to submit for companies that are cross borders? Yes. Yes, you may. Well, some of the where business they are like international. Yeah. Great. So there are 20 answered questions. So thank you very much, Lawrence and Shepard, and whoever else participated in answering though in the text format. And um, we may not have time now to address all of them, but perhaps mm -hmm. we can, as part of our wrap up, just consider what has been asked there and the answers provided so that we can give a summary of that. So any of those questions that stand out for us to note? So between Lawrence and Shepard and Andre and Daphne and Carl, any of those questions that stand out for you that we need to summarize? Um, for me, uh, the issue of uh, digitization is very key. And then the other issue that is coming up is that we need to communicate better and provide clear um, timelines. Um, and then also we need to provide clarity in terms of uh, the evidence. How is that evidence supposed to be submitted? Uh, and then in terms of getting people to start submitting their um, CPD and then also indicating whether they are compliant or not. So those are the things that are coming up from what has been asked so far. And then from our side, perhaps, Crystal, uh, simplification is going to be key. Uh, simplification on time uh, or on time... Uh, like, for instance, the program calendar notification. That is what the, the word. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I see. We can see the questions and answers. So if you are interested in seeing what the answers were, you can open the Q&A window and you'll, you'll see there. Uh, Carl? Uh, uh, yeah, Christoph, I think uh, I agree with, with uh, Lauren's communication is key. I think... Um, if we look at the 20 questions that we received, that's a good indication of how uh, many gaps there are in people actually understanding. And that was confirmed by the poll also of the big percentage of people who's never submitted CPD. So this is really something that we need to communicate more precise. And I see even, even still in the chat, there are statements which are actually questions. So, so, um, Clearly, the we need to shape up in terms of what we communicate that people clearly, clearly understand what we're saying. And just to confirm for some of the notes that I see here, currently all CPD submissions is, is via email. You get you get the template, you fill it in, and you email it back to Ibasa. There is currently no online submissions. So just in case somebody wonders, I see there are some questions here on that. Right, thank you, Carl, for clarifying that. Uh, Shepard, can I ask you to do a last word for us? And then maybe if any of the other panelists would like to comment before we move on to Ibasa organizational issues. You must unmute, remember. Or shall we do it for you? It you seems to be... You. There you are. Now, now you can speak. Should I start all off? You were uh, mute. Shepard? Uh, okay. No, I'm just saying the one issue which seems to be coming out uh, a lot, maybe across all the issues which are, have been raised, is the management, uh, membership management system, which seems to have a few problems here and there. And maybe as Andrew pointed out, that maybe with the new system which you are currently working on, hopefully most of these issues will be direct fight and also in terms of communication that should also be uh, able to improve the communication with with members so that maybe even the online system will be direct and not uh, sending emails and, and filling in forms and sending them back that, that's all I, that i wanted to add 
Yeah, thank you very much. So as members, we'll be patiently waiting for a more fancier system, an easier one to use. Yeah. But in the meantime, we'll do the email thing, yeah. use the templates, download the templates, and submit our CPD reports on time. So that we can keep our standing as certified business advisors or principal business advisors mm. or business advisors. Uh, having that said, is it okay for us then to move off the topic and address Ibasa general issues? Or are there any final comments that anyone would like to make from the panel side? By the way, all attendees can note that there will be a post webinar blog post on the Ibasa website. So if you think that you've missed something or you want to go back to some of the detail, it would be there, including the answers to the questions. So in a few days, not more than a week, uh, you'll be able Christoph? to see it on the website. Yes, Daphne. Christoph, can I come in? Yes, please. Christoph? You can talk. Yeah, yes, Daphne, you can talk. Yes, I, I just wanted to, I'm trying to, to get through the, the question and answer session. The question that was raised regarding the time period is being looked in terms of the submission. There was a question regarding um, what period are the submissions for? Is it 2018, 2019, or 2019, 2020? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if I heard it uh, answered too, because I'm, I'm getting some challenges in terms of uh, the creativity here. Yeah, so no, this sure. is really direct to I think we tried maybe we didn't uh, answer it good enough. So maybe we can just repeat that. Um Lawrence, you answered that question about the timelines and the starts in April. Or yes, I'm saying uh the the CPD points should be submitted in line with the BASA uh financial year. So the previous financial year ended in March, 31st March 20, 2019. Uh, so that one by now should have been submitted. And then the next uh, reporting period will end in March 2020. So from April for the next six months after that, then the submissions should be made. So, so the after the year, February it, deadline is for the March 2019 period. So now the current period, the submissions that people can put in is for the March 2019. Yeah. Great. So definitely I'll answer the question. Yes. Okay. For the period March 2020. That's a clarity I want to come through. Okay, thank okay you. great. So while we are shifting here now, uh, Daphne, so if we can move over to the Barsa specific topics for today and step off the CPD issues. So if I may hand over to you, um, I'm not sure, Carl, there were quite a few questions about membership and so on. So let's not forget about that too. And we've got a slide to show on that. So shall we just start off with that? How to join Ibasa. And these, the details are on there. So you need to go to the website, you can download the application forms, and then you can submit that to admin at ibasa.org.za, along with your CV, copies of certified qualifications and degrees and a copy of your ID. And there's a fee of 600 Rand payable for the processing of that. And then when you are graded, there's an annual membership fee that becomes payable. Was that a fair summary, Daphne? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Andre? Yes, that's correct, Christoph. Christoph, and the, I, I've listened to the, the somebody said that they couldn't get through or something, uh, please feel free to send it to Andre Tibalsa and I can forward it to, to the relevant people. Great, thanks Andre for offering that. Cool, so shall we move on to other Ibasa? So we received some emails saying there's an AGM coming. We received some emails informing us that Daphne stepped into the chairperson role and so on. So Andre and Daphne, can you give us an update as members? All these organizational things that are happening in Ibasa? 
I think the when it was, okay, I think we did have a bit of a, a, a change, but I think Daphne is the right person there. Oh, Daphne, would you like to cover that topic for us? Uh, update on Ibasa. Hi, Christoph. Everybody, I'm Berlin to hear anyone. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able. Please, Kate, you can hear me or. So Daphne, what we'll do is we will mute your camera um, and then we can make sure that we can hear you. So we won't be able to see you, but we make sure then that we can hear you. So please proceed. Okay. Can you hear me properly now? We hear you well. Okay. All right. Uh, let me take this opportunity whilst we're at the tail end of this uh, webinar to thank those members who've made it uh, uh, made time to, to come to us. We were sort of like on pins and needles yesterday when we didn't get enough response and we appreciate those who actually responded. Our role today is just to remind the members about the upcoming uh, AGM of, of IBASA that will be taking place on the 13th of February. The venue is uh, in Ekurileni at the Beachwood. Please go back and check the notices that have been sent out in terms of what you need to do and how to get there and what time you have to be there. Most importantly is the submission for nominations that have to be in by the end of this uh, particular month. We urge members to really respond in the best way possible towards the nominations of, of board members and also urge members to come in their numbers so that they become part of the decision-making of the, of the organization. Unfortunately, this is a one-year event uh, where you get an opportunity to interact with the board and the goings on and the feedback that you would get with regard to the year under review. I will then uh, ask uh, the interim uh, IMD to give more detail with regard to the unfolding events leading up to the 13th. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much, Daphne, for that clarification. And we're looking forward to the AGM. As members, it's our chance to get together too. Um, if I can't travel to Birchwood and I'm sitting in KZN or the Eastern Cape or somewhere in the Free State, can I participate in the AGM still? Yes, yes. Uh, thank you for reminding me about that, that uh, we have, we are for the first time going to try and have all our members around the country participating via uh, as some uh, connectivity or satellite, whatever the, the simplest term I could use for now. We working on that and uh, we would hope that people would ideally group themselves. If not, they would get the necessary link to be able to engage uh, with us at the AGM please know that you will be counted as a participant in that meeting as, as soon as you get uh, connected. I think information will follow through in terms of how, or rather with regard to the link and what needs to be done during that uh, process. Thank you. Right, thank you very much. I think everyone in the provinces are relieved to know that. We can participate mm -hmm. even if we don't have to pay a, a ticket. Yeah. Are there more details on that, Andre, that you would like to share at this point in I time? Think the, or will one the of the things, start? yeah, I think the, the communications will go out on a regular basis. Uh, but the one of the things that perhaps you should be aware of that nominations will be uh, just make sure what your standing is. Are you in good standing uh, so that you can uh, form part of the nomination or vote? Uh, for somebody specifically. So be aware that uh, good standing members may vote. Uh, and if you haven't got your payments in, please do so if you, uh, that would be great. So it will be an ongoing uh, communication from now till then, uh, the 13th. Uh, and we are actually pretty excited because the, 
uh, we would like to meet with, with members um, on that day. So if you can travel, please do so. If you're not in Germany, local Pretoria. Yeah. But otherwise, one can connect online. I just wanted to check with you, Andre. What is the way for someone that's uncertain about their standing to make sure they are in good standing? Again, just reach out to me. Send me a note. I will send it to the relevant people, and we can follow up. Great. Okay. So if you don't, sh if you're not sure about your standing as a member, you can email Andre to check. Yes, and please. Yeah. I think, Christoph, uh, if I may, sim simply put, it's just the members should actually check if they have actually paid their subscription for this year. Maybe we should also apologize that we have not been able to send out reminders in the way that they're supposed to be sent. But we know that membership falls due on your first date of uh, registration with the, with the PASA. The day you got your certificate, uh, as, a, as a, a certificate as a member, your, 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 what you call it, your grading, after being graded, that date is the date that your uh, membership actually falls due. So if you have not received the letter, go back and check your certificate, and then that will give you the date on which you're supposed to renew your membership for now. We hope to fix all of these uh, gaps that are existing in order to make life easier for everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Daphne. So what other IBASA news is there to share? I think those are the key things. Uh, they, so sorry. But the, uh, as I said, Christoph, uh, I'm pretty excited that the uh, Friday, this coming Friday is going to be a a good um, indicator of how far we are. And I believe that we are pretty far with the IT side uh, so that we can get this stuff, uh, ro roll it out uh, as a matter of urgency. Um, the Prof Shepard spoke about the qualifications. That is very, very exciting as well in that the we do have two universities signed up. And I, I believe that the others uh, we've got meetings set up for next week uh, with the other two. Uh, so I hope that we will have four universities signed up very, very quickly. The thing that I'm that really uh, that I'm excited about was the uh, from the TUT side uh, that the Prof Shep or the EDCOM, uh, some of the EDCOM members. Uh, we're in, in the position to assist with the writing of the qualification. Um, so the material, the, the actual material, um, and that's going to be an uh, international uh, uh, qualification. So that is exciting. So I think Ibasa is busy moving forward, and that is what we want to see. So there was a question specifically to this opportunity for serving as a lecturer to Andre. I must just follow up with the Sehu on the, the due date. Uh, I know there was a due date. Um, the, I don't know if Shepard has got the due date, but please send the details through all the information. Uh, send it to me, uh, Andre Tibasa, and I will forward it to the Sehu. Great. So just as a reminder, at the end of each webinar, we ask for feedback from participants. So if you may, please, it really helps us to get the feedback. Uh, there's a link that I pasted into the chat, into the text chat, that you can just click on. And it will take you not more than a minute. It's just a quick set of answers that you can, or options that you can select from. Uh, just click that webinar-feedback.epi.org link, and it will take you to a form to give us a feedback quickly. Great, and so I'm not sure if there are any other issues for the address today. Can we wrap up, Andre? I, th I think so. I think Thank so. Thank you very much. Okay, well, before we run off, uh, can we go around the table, uh, all the panelists? So Lawrence, Shepard, Andre, Daphne, and Andre, if you've got, uh, um, Carl, if you've got something to say too, you may do so. Just in terms of, the year 2020 ahead and any other interesting tidbits that you may have to share. 
things first to look forward to. Yeah. Now we can just go if, on, on the table. Yeah. <laughs> if, if I may, uh, I think members uh, should uh, be looking forward to good things happening. I know that we've had a, a bit of a lull, a bit of a valley, a valley as Ibasa. Now, it was the, the reason for that is that things had to be sort of like tidied up, put down the, a good grounding for things to, to spring from. So as Andre was actually indicating, and this year seems to be having a lot of good prospects, especially where the members are also going to benefit in a, in a big way. So we can only say to them, they must continually check with us, check our website, Sometimes call the office and, and check what is going on to realize thing it's a little bit quiet. But there's a number of things that have actually been lined up and I'm excited especially with what has been done and the amount of work that has been put in by the EDUCOM, which actually sets us apart from other institutions in towards the actually professionalizing the BA space. Thank you. Great stuff. So that's a good note to end perhaps, except if any other panelists want to add something. Can we say goodbye then? Thanks, Lawrence, Shep, Shepard, yep. Andre, Carl, Daphne. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, you so Thank you for much. everyone that appeared in the room today with us to learn about CPD and to have a good week and a good year. Thank ahead. you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you so Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. Okay. Bye. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.